In this video, we will be looking at one approach to bypass multi-factor authentication, which is the Active Directory attribute takeover. The concept here is that an attacker may have uh, been able to compromise a user account and even have access to the password, but they are unable to perform interactive logons through remote desktop because there is a multi-factor authentication provider block in the way, such as Duo. And in order to get into that remote desktop session, they need to have physical access to the user's phone to answer an MFA prompt or provide an SMS verification code. However, many of these MFA providers synchronize information from Active Directory or other identity stores. And if the attacker is able to override the attributes there, they can then synchronize them to the MFA provider, put their own information in, intercept the prompts, bypass MFA, and then set things back the way they were. Um, oftentimes, 80 permissions are left open, especially the users, so they can update their own information for self-service purposes. And if not, there's also more advanced ways like DC Shadow that let you make changes to Active Directory without detection because it's using replication to push a change into AD. So let's take a look at how this would work in our lab. Um, you can assume I have compromised a user Tobias in this lab, and I'm trying to log in to remote desktop as him. But when I do that, what I get is something that looks like this, um, a prompt from Duo where I have to answer a push notification or provide a passcode, which I don't have access to. So I'm going to come back here. And what I'm going to do is create a DC shadow um, change and push that to Active Directory to override that user's phone number. So to do that, I'm first going to launch Mimikatz uh, as system. So you want to run one prompt as system here. So you can act as, as the computer you've compromised. This is going to pretend to be a domain controller to Active Directory and present to it a change to replicate. So I'm going to launch Mimikatz from here. And once I do that, I'm going to elevate my token. So you can see I'm running as system. And I've prepared a change here. I'm going to copy in, which is going to update Tobias's phone number to my phone number so I can intercept his MSA prompts. So now I've staged that change. I just need to launch another PowerShell window here where I'm going to use Mimikatz again. And all I'm going to do is uh, tell it to push the change. It's going to trigger replication from a genuine domain controller to my fake domain controller and commit that change to AD. And now I should be able to come in and see that user's phone number has been changed to my phone number. So if we take a look at Duo, we should be able to see Tobias here, who it currently says has a phone number here, 777-1111. But we're going to trigger a sync. The attacker might have to wait for this sync to happen. I'm not going to be that patient. I'm just going to trigger it. And now you can see it's been updated. So now I have the ability to go back. And when I go into my next remote desktop session, it's going to present me with a duo prompt. If I type the password in right. And if I choose this drop down, you can see. I now have my phone number there. I can send a text to it. I can enter that here. And then I can DC shadow the old phone number back, covering up my tracks. So that's just one way that you can bypass MFA through Active Directory attributes. In order to protect against that, you may want to disable SMS prompts. You probably want to disable automatically syncing phone numbers, especially if you're using Duo. You can set that as an option. And you should, of course, look at securing Active Directory permissions and monitoring changes closely. And if you can, detect DC Shadow. To find out more about attack strategies and how to defend against them, go to netrix.com slash attack.